Welcome to Direct U.S. Immigration's channel, where you get direct access to our most up-to-date immigration and global mobility space. My name is Matreya Brown, and I'm going to talk about a visa issued to the fiancé of a U.S. citizen. This visa allows the fiancé to enter the U.S. to marry the U.S. citizen within 90 days of arrival. Stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Matreya Brown and I am a U.S. immigration attorney based in Washington, D.C. I am also the principal attorney at Direct U.S. Immigration, where we work with clients in all 50 states and around the world. Before we start, click on the like and subscribe button to follow our immigration hub to get the latest information that could be vital to your case. The K-1 visa, also known as the fiancé visa, is a non-immigrant visa that permits the U.S. citizens foreign-born fiancé to enter the United States to marry their partner. To get a K-1 visa, the U.S. citizen fiancé will file a form I-129F in addition to other steps that we'll discuss later. Your U.S. citizen fiancé is the petitioner, so the person filing the petition, uh, and the beneficiary is the person who will benefit from the petition. Getting a K-1 visa can be a complicated process. You must meet specific eligibility requirements and you must follow precise steps. If you fail to file paperwork correctly or complete the necessary steps, your case may face huge delays or even worse, be denied. Now to get the K-1 visa, you generally have to fulfill the following criteria. So first, you have to be engaged to a U.S. citizen. Uh, you also have to have the intention to marry within 90 days of entering the U.S. You have to have proof of the relationship before the engagement. Uh, you have to get married in accordance with U.S. laws uh, while in the U.S. on that K-1 visa. Uh, you and your U.S. citizen fiance must have met in person at least once within the past two years, although exceptions do apply to this requirement, uh, which, you know, these exceptions can be granted if you can prove that the U.S. citizen would face uh, extreme hardship to come and visit the uh, fiancé, um, and extreme hardship can be shown uh, by way of culture, customs, or other factors such as the COVID-19 pandemic. So, uh, and then of course, any you know, previous marriages that either of the individuals have had must be legally terminated. So here's a general list of the documents that you're going to need to have with you uh, when applying for the K-1 visa at an embassy or a consulate abroad. So first you're gonna to want to have your valid passport uh, that has more than six months you know, after your intended uh, entry into the US, uh, your two recent US uh, visa photographs, so those typically look like passport pictures, uh, the form DS-160 confirmation page, uh, confirmation code, uh, the interview scheduled letter, the approved form I-129F, uh, criminal background documents, uh, and if applicable, divorce or death certificates in case of a previous marriage, um, evidence of uh, the relationship with the U.S. citizen, uh, your medical exam documents, as well as proof of payment of uh, any fee, so typically uh, proof of payment of the DS-160 fee. Now, in terms of applying for the K-1 visa, typically this fiancé visa application has a few steps that both fiancés must follow. So the U.S. citizen must first obtain permission from USCIS to bring and sponsor their foreign citizen fiancé to the U.S. If USCIS grants this permission, then the foreign citizen fiancé must apply for the K-1 visa stamp at the embassy or consulate abroad, which I had briefly touched on uh, before. So to get a petition approved from USCIS, you generally have to go through the following steps. Now, as previously mentioned, you will need to file form I-129F, and this is filed with USCIS, uh, for which USCIS will then process the petition where the official will go through uh, the evidence of the relationship, whether the parties do in fact intend to get married in the U.S., and whether they will fulfill the eligibility criteria. If both the U.S. citizen and the foreign citizen's fiancé fulfill the requirements, then USCIS will approve the petition and send it to the National Visa Center, um, so to NBC, where um, NBC will then uh, inform the embassy or the consulate that's closest to the foreign national fiancé, uh, where that uh, individual can 
uh, take the steps to uh, make an appointment and apply for the K-1 visa. Now, it's important to note that you cannot obtain the K-1 visa without an approved I-129F. Now, when applying for the K-1 visa abroad, uh, you're going to have to fill out Form DS-160, schedule the, the visa interview, complete medical exams, uh, compile all of your documents together, and then, of course, attend the visa interview. Now, the DS-160 form is a non-immigrant visa application uh, with the Department of State that basically requests information about your personal information and why you plan to go to the U.S. Uh, when you submit it, uh, you will get a confirmation page as well as a code. Uh, from there, you can then schedule the, uh, you know, the U.S. visa uh, interview and then you can attend that interview. Typically, if you are between ages 14 and 79, you will have to do the interview uh, where you will receive the interview appointment confirmation, uh, like I said, once the uh, appointment is scheduled. Now, it's important to note that you will have to complete a medical examination. And so if you're, so just generally speaking, if you're traveling to the U.S., and especially if you're planning to apply for a U.S. immigrant visa in the future, you must have a licensed physician conduct the necessary medical examination. So the doctor must write a report stating your current health conditions. And since the fiance will get married soon and apply for permanent residence, it's also advisable to get the necessary U.S. requirements required vaccinations in order to complete um, that medical exam and furtherance of, you know, long term of being a green card holder. Now when compiling all of your evidence uh, in furtherance of the interview, um, you do want to present the required K-1 visa documents, um, which your immigration lawyer will assist you with, um, but it's basically similar to the documents that uh, were previously submitted, as well as additional documents. Uh, pertaining to the DS-160. Now the next stage is to attend your visa interview. So during the interview, you're going to want to show your documents and you're going to be answering uh, some questions that the uh, official will be interviewing you on. So typically they'll ask questions about your relationship with the U.S. citizen and other details about your background and your intentions in the United States. Now the big question is, can a K-1 visa application get rejected? So the answer is yes in various uh, circumstances. So some of the specific reasons why a application may be rejected can include involvement in criminal activities such as drug trafficking, human trafficking, animal trafficking, um, if you've submitted falsified documents, or if you've overstayed in the U.S. on a previous visa or broken any other uh, U.S. visa laws. Now let's talk about the K-1 visa processing time. So the overall time that it takes for the K-1 visa to process will depend on many factors, including current USCIS processing times and how busy the consulate or embassy at your location is. And it will most likely take many, many months, so you're definitely going to need to plan ahead and expect delays, if you're, especially if you're planning a wedding in the U.S. And generally speaking, these delays can be the result of partial or full closures of uh, immigration offices, um, caseloads at those immigration uh, USCIS offices, uh, further investigation into your background, into your criminal history, or, or other administrative delays. Now, once you get to the stage where you will be interviewing for the K-1 visa, it's important to really be prepared. Um, some of the types of questions that may add that they'll likely ask you specifically are, what is your name, your date of birth, where were you born, um, how old are you, uh, what is your nationality, what languages do you speak, do you have any children, uh, were you previously married, if so, when, how many, um, is the uh, previous marriage officially over, um, when you enter the U.S., uh, you know, what are you seeking to do, um, have you ever been in the U.S. before, if so, on what status, have you ever been arrested, have you ever been convicted of a crime, uh, and what is your profession, among a lot of other questions that they may ask. Now, they may also ask questions about your uh, U.S. citizen fiancé. Uh, such as your fiancé's full name, date of birth, where your fiancé was born, where they currently live, what they do for work, 
um, whether your fiance has ever been married before, and whether those marriages uh, were terminated, and whether your fiance has any children, if so, how many, um, et cetera. Other questions that they can ask about the relationship is, uh, where did you meet your fiance? How did you meet? Uh, have you ever visited your fiance in the US? Or has your fiance ever visited you um, outside of the US? Um, where did you get engaged? Uh, did you have an engagement party? Um, how did your fiance propose? Or how did you propose if you were the one that proposed? Um, how was there an engagement party? Uh, how many times have you and your fiance met in person? Um, and how often do you speak to your fiance? So these are the general questions that they'll ask. Um, and they may go into more detail depending on your answers. Um, and it just varies on a case by case basis. So making sure that you are prepared for the interview is very important and will make the difference of whether the K-1 visa is approved or not. So to conclude, the K-1 visa is a special visa that allows the fiance of a U.S. citizen to enter the U.S. to get married to their partner and adjust and eventually adjust their status uh, in the U.S. to that of a green card holder. Now, you know, you should have a much stronger understanding of various aspects of the K-1 visa, including the visa benefits, requirements, and processes. I hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe if this content or information helps you in any way. Comment below if you want me to talk about something in specific and share this resource because you never know who needs answers to these questions. I'll see you in the next video.